One of the worst things that can happen to a mother is if one of her children disappears. But in Emma's case, she has two other children to take care of and must give everything to stay as strong as possible for them. And even though a mother will never truly stop looking, at some point she has to find a way to make peace with it. With years or even decades passing, wounds will heal and the memory will fade. But when the police get an unexpected tip nearly 40 years after Emma's daughter's disappearance, it changes everything. The phone rang loudly through Emma's empty house. Who could it be at this time? Nonetheless, Emma picked up the phone and muffled a nervous hello she was taken aback when the man on the other side of the line introduced himself as a police officer. What could he want from her? There was only one thing Emma could think of could this have to do with Lily somehow after all those years? She had given up hope completely at least. That's what she thought but apparently, with one call from the police, it is again all she could think about. Emma tries to calm herself down, but then the police tell her they got a tip. Emma's heart nearly stops when she hears who gave them the tip, and she immediately rushes to the police station. But to better understand Emma's reaction, we have to start at the beginning of the story. Emma is a now elderly woman living on the east coast of America. She has only recently moved, having come all the way from the west coast. But what inspired this big move at such an old age? The story that leads up to this big event and change is incredible. As one might expect, Emma's story starts on the West Coast with Emma only being 18 years old. She had just met the love of her life in Daniel. The first time Emma saw her boyfriend-to-be, she could not keep her eyes off of him, and when Daniel noticed this, he was ready to act on it. Daniel was a couple of years Emma's senior. He had been around the block, and while he was Emma's first real relationship, she definitely was not his first. This meant that even though Emma wanted to take some things slowly, Daniel didn't want to wait for some of the pleasures of a relationship. Even though Emma might not have felt fully ready for a relationship like this yet, she did enjoy it a lot more than expected. They ended up having a lot of fun together, but it is possible that they were having a little too much fun without the proper protection. Emma got pregnant. This was absolutely not what she and Daniel had planned for they were both still so young and didn't intend on having children for years. They spent a lot of time thinking and discussing the situation. After weeks of going back and forth, they made their decision they decided to keep the baby. Emma would move in with Daniel, and they rushed to get their life in order. It put a lot of stress on their still relatively new relationship, but they seemed to weather the storm somehow. Nine months later, their daughter Lily was born. Emma's whole life changed. All the stress, anger, and struggle from the past months seemed to just flow out of Emma. She fell head over heels in love with her little angel. She had never been this happy. It might have come a lot sooner than expected, but this was the life she had always envisioned for herself. The first two years felt like surprisingly smooth sailing. Daniel had found a job in the harbor, which sadly meant that he could not be home much, but it did pay just enough for the couple to keep their heads above water. Still, it definitely was not easy for the couple financially. Emma and Daniel seemed to have developed a somewhat steady relationship, with her putting the focus on raising Lily while Daniel was mostly working to put food on the table. They knew they had everything they needed, even if they didn't necessarily have everything they wanted. But their relationship was about to hit another unexpected big speed bump. Emma got pregnant again. With one child, it was already very difficult for the couple to make ends meet, but with another child, this would become nearly impossible. For the next couple of weeks, they were trying to come up with other ways to make money. But there was yet another surprise for them. About halfway through the pregnancy, with the couple yet to figure out how they would make things work financially, Emma had to go to the doctor again for a checkup. She did not think much of it, but the doctor would have some very unexpected and possibly unwelcome news for her. The doctor told Emma that she was not just having one baby but two twins. The feelings of joy and financial stress were going back and forth in her head, but the positives heavily outweighed the negatives for her. Daniel, however, saw it a little differently. He was not happy at all. He didn't see having two more children as a possibility. There was no way they could make that work, and he predicted that it would affect their life very negatively. Emma was furious about Daniel's reaction, and they got into a big argument that ended in a surprising suggestion from Daniel. The only solution Daniel saw was for Emma to get an abortion. Maybe at a later date, they could think about having children again, but this was not the time in his eyes. Emma wanted to hear nothing about this possibility, but then Daniel came with a shocking ultimatum for her it was him or the twins. If Emma decided to keep the children, he would leave her. Emma was stunned by this unexpected ultimatum, but Daniel was very firm with his demand. When the gravity of the ultimatum really got through to Emma, she had no hesitation in her answer. There was no way she was giving up the twins. If Daniel wanted to walk out on them, that was on him. Daniel had hoped it would not come to this. But if anything, he was a man of his word, so he started to pack up his things and make plans that very same day. It took only a few weeks to get everything in order, and then Daniel left them for good. He moved to a different city and left Emma in the dark about which one. All she knew was that it was far away from her. This might seem surprising, but Daniel felt he was left with no other choice. In her anger, 
Emma had also forbidden Daniel from seeing their daughter ever again. The fact that Daniel did not seem to make a big fuss about this only confirmed to Emma that it was the right decision to let him walk away. She would now have to find a way to make it on her own. Emma decided to move back in with her parents. This way, her mother could look after Lily and the soon-to-be-born twins while Emma found a job or maybe two to take care of her little family. Her parents were very sympathetic to the situation and didn't even charge her any rent so she could start saving. The twins were born a couple of months later in good health. It was a difficult labor period, but Emma made it through. All the pain, struggles, and other difficulties she faced over the past couple of months just seemed to fade away in an instant when she saw her precious little angels. Lily was almost three years old and was fascinated by her new siblings. She was always around them when they were home, and Emma was so happy that she seemed to like them. In her eyes, this was the beginning of a new and happier family without Daniel. She was looking forward to the future. With her parents watching the kids and Emma being able to save a lot of the money she was making from her two jobs, things finally started to look up for her. But just when things started to look up, something bad happened again. Only a few days after her fourth birthday, Lily went missing. While Emma was at work and her parents were busy with the twins, Lily suddenly disappeared. She had been playing in the garden at the time, as she often did. But when Emma's parents went to check on her, she was gone. Emma's parents immediately went to ask everybody in the neighborhood. Nobody seemed to have seen her or noticed anything, so they called the police. Emma went into a blind panic when she got the call from her parents and rushed home from work in the middle of her shift not thinking of any potential consequences. Emma didn't even have time to be angry at her parents for losing Lily. The police beat her to the house. They immediately put every available agent on it and spread a picture of her through the neighborhood. But the search was sadly unsuccessful, and Emma was inconsolable. What had happened to Lily? Emma called everyone she knew, and all of her attention was focused on the search for Lily. This, however, brought other problems. She was spending so much effort looking for Lily that she wasn't going to work. This put her at risk of losing her job and thus her income. On top of that, her parents weren't able to care for the twins all the time. Emma's mother had gotten sick only days after Lily had gone missing. She had no other family to take care of her, so a lot of the responsibility fell on the shoulders of Emma's father. But this severely limited the time he could watch the twins, and none of them could afford a babysitter. Emma had a terribly difficult decision to make. It was obvious that she was never going to stop looking for Lily until she was found, but she couldn't let her search be her only focus, even though she really wanted it to be. She needed to be there for her twins as well as provide for them. She had to trust that the police would do their jobs. They promised her that they would do everything in their power to find Lily. Emma had to get back to work and focus on the twins, otherwise she was at risk of losing everything she had worked so hard for. With a hurting heart and an inability to focus on anything, she tried to get back to work. Her bosses gave her as much time as they could to let her get back in the swing of things, considering the circumstances. Emma really tried to make an effort, but it was very difficult. Her mind just kept wandering off to Lily. What had happened to her? Where could she be? How had she let this happen? Even though her bosses felt very bad for Emma, after a while, they had no choice but to let her go. Emma couldn't even bring herself to care. The next couple of years consisted of Emma moving from job to job just trying to do the best she could while still holding out hope that Lily would return. To her knowledge, the police had never stopped looking, but as the years passed, she knew their efforts must have decreased considerably. After four years without Lily, with the twins now having to go to school, Emma finally forced herself to start moving on and making progress in her life again. The police had stopped their last efforts almost a year ago, and Emma somehow found a way to accept within herself that she would never see Lily again. She managed to land a new job a good job. It was the first full-time job she'd ever had. Between it and taking care of her twins, she didn't have much time to think about anything else. Then Emma got the chance she had been waiting for for a very long time. She was offered a long-term contract by the company meaning she would finally have some stability in her life, allowing her to build further. This also gave her the ability to move out of her parents' house and get a place for herself and the twins. But the memory of Lily still haunted her. She kept wondering if she had done enough to find her daughter, if she had had the right priorities at the time, if there was something she had missed. The twins were now also getting to an age where she needed to tell them about Lily. They were way too young to have any memory of her, but they still deserved to know. With her newfound stability in life and the twins needing less and less care, Lily started popping into Emma's mind more and more. She even made some calls to the police to see if they had ever found anything. But the answer always disappointed her. It would be this way for the foreseeable future. Many more years passed. The twins grew up and moved out of the house. They found partners and began living their lives. To Emma's incredible disappointment, these lives took them both out of state. They would call a lot, but she barely got to see them anymore. Her whole life felt empty. Emma spent most of her days alone and at home after retiring two years earlier. She didn't have many friends left in the area and hadn't made any new ones either. Then, she got a call that could potentially change everything. 
The phone rang. On the other end was a policeman who introduced himself to Emma. She was confused why were the police calling her. The policeman explained that they had gotten a very noteworthy call from another police department across the country. The information involved Emma, but more importantly it involved her daughter Lily. Emma's heart did a flip-flop when she heard that name, and her voice began to tremble. Of course, she had never forgotten Lily, but any hope she'd had that her daughter would be found had been abandoned many, many, many years ago. The policeman explained that somebody had come forward with more information. Emma barely seemed to hear the officer on the other end of the line. She was still in shock from the news that they had found new information about Lily. But then she heard the name of the person who had come forward and given the tip in question. She woke up immediately. The policeman proclaimed that Daniel, her ex-husband and the father of her children, had shown up at a police station across the country and told them he wanted to make a confession. The guilt of what he had done had been eating away at him for many years now. Emma had not taken a breath since she heard Daniel's name. She waited with bated breath for the rest of the story. The policeman continued. Daniel had supposedly admitted that it was him who had taken Lily all those years ago. He had known when Emma was at work and had waited for a moment when Lily was alone. Daniel had driven up to the house and saw Lily playing in the garden by herself. Unsurprisingly, Lily had gotten in the car with him without much hesitation. She had missed her dad and didn't think anything bad could happen if she just went for a drive with him. Daniel had been overcome with the idea that he might never see his daughter again and figured this was the only way to get her back. He took Lily to his newly acquired house across the country, where nobody knew either him or Lily. They were able to build their own life away from it all. Of course, Lily wondered why she could no longer see her mother, but apparently Daniel had always made sure Lily never saw this as a problem. Daniel had not told the police how he did this, but Emma would soon find out what her devil of an ex-husband had told their daughter. With Lily now having moved out of her dad's house many years ago, Daniel was alone alone with his guilt. Eventually, it all became too much for him to take. He knew that he would need to go to the police and tell them everything that had happened. Upon hearing this confession, the police arrested him and went about contacting Emma to verify everything he had been telling them. Everything started to make sense now for Emma, but a lot of questions still remained. She was still angry and upset, and Daniel had one more confession to make. He told the police that if they were going to contact Emma, they ought to know where Lily was living now, so she could finally see her again after all those years. Daniel had always told Lily that Emma never wanted to see either of them again, and Lily had always believed him. With this information, there wasn't even enough time in Emma's mind to be as mad at Daniel as she should have been. There was only one thing she could think of getting in contact with Lily. Because she was afraid that she wouldn't be able to explain herself over the phone to her daughter, she had to try something else. She decided to book the first plane she could get. She packed her essentials and went off to the airport. And now, almost 8 p.m., she stood in front of what was supposedly Lily's house. Had Daniel given the right address? Emma saw lights on in the house and knew someone was home. She rang the doorbell and after a couple of seconds, a young girl of about 12 opened the door. Emma immediately teared up when she saw her. While it wasn't Lily, the girl looked so much like Lily had at that age. With a trembling voice, Emma asked if the girl's mom was home. The girl nodded and yelled inside for her mother. Emma heard footsteps approaching, and within seconds she was greeted by a tall and beautiful woman, clearly in her 40s. The woman greeted Emma and asked how she could help. With tears streaming down her face, Emma asked if her name was Lily. The woman raised an eyebrow. Yes, that's me. But how did you know my name, she asked. With Emma now barely able to control her emotions, she replied, Lily, my name is Emma. I am your mother. Lily's jaw dropped and she was completely speechless. Emma, too, wasn't sure what to say at first. After a few moments, the silence was broken by the young girl yelling, Grandma, and giving Emma a hug. Still stuck in confusion, Lily invited Emma inside. They had a lot to talk about over the next couple of hours. Emma easily had enough proof of her claim and had no problem convincing Lily that what Daniel had told her growing up was all lies. Lily had always suspected that something was not right with the situation but had no idea how to go about fixing it or getting back in contact with her mother until now. Lily came to the radical idea of Emma moving into the empty house on their street. She wanted to make up for lost time with her mother. Since Emma no longer had any ties to where she was currently living, she immediately agreed to the idea. Within two months, Everything was settled. Emma sold her old house and moved into the one on the same street as Lily. She now constantly spends time with her daughter and her granddaughter. It seems like Emma can finally be truly happy again and enjoy the rest of her days with Lily.